Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to attempt to use my Android phone as a portable video capture device. Sometimes when I'm traveling, I would like the ability to capture video from different HDMI devices. I then decided to research some standalone capture devices and they were either very expensive or reviews said the quality was questionable or I just couldn't verify the quality. During my research, I found out about the UVC standard. UVC, short for USB video class, allows a device such as a camera or capture device to automatically be detected by the operating system as a video source with no need to install extra drivers. It turns out that some Android devices support UVC and one of those devices is my Galaxy S20 Ultra. So then I searched for any UVC compatible capture dongles in hopes that I can turn my phone into a portable capture device. After hours of searching, I decided to test out two UVC devices. This generic USB capture device from Amazon, which cost $24, and also the Elgato CamLink, which cost $130. I already own a non-UVC Elgato capture device and I really like the quality I get out of it, so I was willing to take a leap of faith with the CamLink, even though I found the price a bit high. But it's certainly a lot cheaper than the $400 of Elgato standalone capture device. Let's see if my leap of faith pays off. So in theory, if you plug in any UVC device to a compatible Android phone or tablet, applications can access it and pull a live video feed from it. Now let's see if it actually works. So what you need to accomplish this are the capture devices themselves, an HDMI device that you want to capture from along with an HDMI cable, an adapter that converts a USB-C plug on the Galaxy S20 to a USB-A connector. Finally, we need some software that will recognize the video capture device. The software I will be using is an app called USB Camera. It costs around $6, but there's also a free ad supported version. Make sure this app is installed and open before connecting everything. I now have everything ready, so I'll plug the USB-C hub to my phone. Then I'll plug in the video capture dongle to the USB-C hub. Two alerts will appear on my phone asking me if I want to give the USB camera app permissions to use the capture dongle. Hit OK on both those alerts. Now I'll plug in the HDMI device I want to capture from and its output will appear on the USB camera app. To start recording, just tap on anywhere on the screen. Then tap on the red button on the bottom right of the screen. You are shown some options. We only care about the record and snapshot button. The snapshot button takes a screenshot of the current capture. When you press the snapshot button, you get an alert showing where the screenshot is saved to. And to start recording video, just hit the record button and you'll see a recording timer on the top left. Click on the record button again to end the recording and you'll also see an alert showing you where the recording was saved to. Because the preview screen is on my phone, details may be too small to be discernible. To help with this, you can pinch to zoom to get a closer look. The app will still record the entire screen, not the area you pinch to zoom to. I must say that I'm very impressed with how the capture video is closely synced with the source, but while actually playing a retro game, it does feel sluggish. I can definitely notice a delay when I press a button and the action on my phone screen. The downside to these dongles is that they do not offer HDMI pass-through. So if you plan on playing games with one of these adapters, then you should get an HDMI splitter to avoid any lag they introduce. Changing resolutions and frame rates is different with each dongle. With a generic dongle, I can change the resolution and frame rate using the USB camera app. However, with the Elgato Cam Link, I need to set the device I'm capturing from to the appropriate resolution and refresh rate. For instance, on my Chromebook, if I want to capture at 1080p 60 frames per second, I set the resolution on the Chromebook to 1080p and the refresh rate to 60 Hz. And if I want to record at 4K 30 frames per second, I change the resolution to 4K and the refresh rate to 30 Hz. Here's what I see on the app when using the cam link at 1080p 60Hz, and here's what I see at 4K 30Hz. If your device doesn't offer resolution and refresh rate switching, then you'll only be able to use what it sends to the cam link. To further customize the quality and size of your recordings, the app offers you a way to set the bitrate. 
Now, regarding the quality I get from the captures. With a generic adapter, I get really bad video recordings, both in terms of quality and in terms of performance. By default, the image quality is overexposed and oversaturated. The app has adjustments to compensate for this, but what you can adjust depends only if the UVC device supports it. Also, there are more issues with a generic capture device. Text is very blurry as you can notice in this test page. The recordings also have stutters and audio distortions. Listen to how this video sounds normally. Just a trim, please. Boris Agent 307. Then to how it sounds recorded through the generic capture card. Playing around with the app's quality settings and resolutions didn't fix any of the problems. But I also didn't have any of these issues when using the generic adapter on my desktop PC. Audio and video playback is smooth and without distortions when using the generic adapter on my desktop PC. But the oversaturation and overexposure was still occurring. So I was worried that this was an issue with the app or Android itself. But when using the cam link, I get much better performance and image quality. The exposure and saturation are just right by default. Text is really sharp. Video and audio also play smooth. Just a trim, 1080p 60 frames per second and 4K 30 frames per second captures work flawlessly on the cam link. Here's a comparison of how text compares between the generic adapter and the cam link. On the right, the text looks really blurry from the generic adapter, whereas the cam link capture on the left looks really sharp. Now here's another comparison of how video looks. The video on the generic adapter doesn't look bad, and some might even prefer the more saturated look. However, I'd rather have the capture more closely match what I see on the source device, which the cam link does. I can always change the saturation in post. Anyway, for use as an Android capture device, the Camlink was the only useful one. The stuttering, audio issues, and blurry text I got from the generic device disqualifies it from my use cases. The Camlink was rock solid, so if you're willing to pay the $130 it costs, then I would definitely recommend it. This doesn't mean that other UVC devices will work as bad as the generic one I had, it's just that performance may vary between different devices. If you get good results from another device, please let me know in the comments. So, with a UVC capture device and an Android phone, you can have a really good portable capture solution. As far as storage is concerned, you are limited to what your phone provides. But if your phone accepts SD card storage, you can insert a 1TB card and have plenty of space for your captures. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, subscribe to my channel. Thank you, and I'll speak to you next time.